Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. I used to do this long ago on the channel, I think before the 2021 governor elections, as a matter of fact, and for some reason I decided to stop, don't remember why, so I'm going to restart the series again, and we're going to start off with Ohio, the 2024 Ohio Senate candidate shortlist. I have picked five Republicans and five Democrats who I just generally believe would be the best choices for each party. And I'll go over some pros and cons. You know how this works. But a new thing, I'm going to be mentioning some honorable mentions. Uh, first up, we have J.R. Majewski. He was Marcy Kaptur's opponent in 2022. And he lost by 13 points. Honestly, when it comes to policy, I think he's a pretty great fit for uh, that district, even though he lost. And he's also a pretty good fit for Ohio. He's pretty much someone who can appeal to Obama-Trump voters. You know, we have those moderate... Uh, po social policies as well as economic populist policies and he's also someone who has gone on record and saying he would work with democrats as much as he could um however he did throw a jab in there saying he didn't know if democrats would want to work with him even though he would want to try um however due to the fact that he did lose to marcy captor by 13 in a trump plus two district his electability does come into question and as well as the fact that a scandal that's false has been proven as false will still haunt him which is sad but it is what it is Next is John Cranley, the former Democrat mayor of, I believe, Cincinnati, I believe. Um, he is someone who could appeal to Trump voters as well, considering that he is pro-life. Of course, it is difficult for him to get through a primary. He only got 33% of the vote in the Democrat primary in 2022 in Ohio. So, again, his electability does come into questioning. Um, again, that's only if Sherrod Brown retires. Uh, next is Frank LaRose, the Secretary of State of Ohio. I don't get what the hype around this man is. I really don't get it. Like, I, I swear to God if I hear any he's based comments because that is that will get you, like, look what happened in 2022. All your based candidates lost. I don't want to fucking hear it. Like, frankly, he's just a generic Republican. And you need it. And, you know, he could win against Sherrod Brown. He could. But in my opinion, you need someone who's not a generic Republican in the Senate to actually get things done and not just be another name in the long list of people you have in Congress. Uh, next for the Democrats is the uh, recently elected congressman from Ohio's 1st Congressional District, Greg Landsman, who defeated Steve Chabot, even though many people thought Chabot was going to win re-election. Landsman will, you know, has serving in his first term. Uh, he's an interesting one because of the fact that he could be someone who stands out amongst the giant crowd of Democrats. Uh, he's also someone who supports term limits in Congress, which is pretty big, if you want my honest opinion. Again, we don't know much about Greg Landsman. He could be a great backup, 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 backup if Sherrod Brown decides to retire, but Sherrod Brown has announced he's running. So now let's get on to the number five list for the Republicans, and that is Jane Timken, the former chair of the Ohio GOP. Uh, she's someone who I think would have, uh, outperformed J.D. Vance in 2022 if she had become the nominee. Even though I supported Vance, I can't concede that I think Timken would have done better. Um, if she were to run in 2022, I really doubt she would win the primary. However, she, you know, she would just be like, she would be like Katie Britt. You know, she'd be like, oh, there's all these unknowns, yada, yada, yada. Uh, in my opinion, I think she'd just be another generic R inside of the Senate. Uh, not someone that is needed for Ohio, which needs those big populist names uh, running, uh, you know, representing them in the Senate. Uh, number five for the Democrats is Amelia Skye. She is currently the one-term congresswoman out of Ohio's 13th district. Uh, she's the former House Minority Leader of o the Ohio State, uh, State of Representatives, House of Representatives, and she's a former Ohio State congresswoman state representative whatever uh again like she would just be another generic d in the inside of the senate she'd vote with joe biden 99 percent of the time if not 100 percent of the time nothing special about her however just you know skin deep reasons is the fact that she would be probably the fifth best choice democrats could run um she also could appeal to you know um suburban voters a lot better than most other democrats would that's just my honest opinion uh, number four for the Republicans is Warren Davidson. I've kind of been pushing his name out there to run for Senate. Uh, when I talk about who should run for Senate, Warren Davidson. Definitely someone who's controversial, but not in the way that would cause him to underperform, because if that was the case, he'd be underperforming top of the ballot. 
you know, in every election he has been in. Instead, he's running even, sometimes outperforming, but you know, by like a point or so. Davidson, you know, someone who is a right-wing populist of, you know, he'd be like J.D. Vance, except he'd be more, um, he'd be more populist than progressive on economic issues. J.D. Vance is a progressive on economics. Don't get the two confused. Davidson would be a populist, and I think that would be a powerful Senate uh, combination there, Senate delegation in Ohio. How he would do against the Sherrod Brown, I think he would probably do very well. I think he'd beat Sherrod Brown due to the fact that Ohio is trended so far to the right. And the fact it's going to be a presidential year, I think Davidson could end up beating Brown probably like two or three points. Because Brown's still got, you know, he's still popular. He's still got his uh, supporters in there that are still Trump voters. So we'll just have to wait and see. It's going to be an interesting election, to say the least. Next up, Tim Ryan. If Sherrod Brown were to retire, I can honestly understand why Democrats would want to flock to Tim Ryan again. And honestly, it's not a bad call. He, you know, he ran the best campaign in 2022. If it was a blue wave, he probably would have beaten J.D. Vance. But, you know, he ran the best campaign he could. He still lost. However, he's still probably the best choice Democrats could run. Note he's only number three on this list of five Democrats. He's a, no longer a sitting member of Congress. I don't know what he's going to be doing with his uh, his life now. Maybe he's just retired. He deserves it. He's been in Congress for a long time. Um, Yeah, I think that's everything. I Oh, I do think if Tim Ryan were to go back to being pro-life, or at least pro-exceptions, saying he would only support, like, a... You know, a, a late term abortion, a late trimester, a third trimester abortion ban, um, as if there was exceptions, you know, kind of complicated, uh, word salad there to maybe people think, oh, he's pro life, blah, blah, blah. Because he used to be pro life. He, he used to. And then for some reason, he flip flopped to becoming pro choice. That was, that was weird. And now there's a new option, pro exceptions, where it's like, what? Man, these new terms being thrown at you every day. It's, it's great. Mike Turner, the number three for the Republicans. Honestly, my choice to run for Senate. However, I can understand if you don't want Mike Turner because he is a hawk on foreign policy. And in Ohio, that could backfire. However, he is the former mayor of Dayton, which is like, holy shit. The fact that he's like winning landslides in his congressional district with parts of Dayton in that, um, with, with, actually, he's gotten most of Dayton in that uh, congressional district he's in, if I'm not mistaken, and he's still winning 60% of the vote, where Trump only won by, like, 4%. So, that's a big outperformance from Mike Turner. Um, When it comes to economics, he's always been just a generic R when it comes to economics. However, ever since Trump came into office, it's clear that he's taken a strong populist focus on economics. Of course, he'll always vote for, like, a populist economic legislation if it's from the Republicans. Maybe Democrats, too. I don't know. Um, he's, he, it's been noticeable ever since Trump came into office in 2016, so or 2017, so it's been a lot more noticeable. And he's also a moderate R, so he could appeal to a lot of Joe Biden voters. So I think if Turner were to face Sherrod Brown, I think he would actually do better than most. I think he'd beat Sherrod Brown by four to five, you know, either leaned likely on the brink of both. Uh, he'd be one of the stronger choices. Uh, the number two for the Democrats, this... Wait a minute. No, number three. I had Tim Ryan as number four. I apologize. Number three for the Democrats is Amy Acton. Um, she is the former health director in Ohio. She's someone who, honestly, I think could do better than Tim Ryan because Tim Ryan just lost a Senate race in a moderate year. Though, if you want to say it's a red wave, like there's, it's weird. I, I think it's a moderate year because it was an R plus three year, and I think if it was R plus five or higher, it would have been red. Anyway. Enough of me rambling. Uh, Amy Acton was appointed as the health director of Ohio by the Republican governor, Mike DeWine, and she's a Democrat. So there is a good chance that she could have a lot of um, crossover appeal. Potentially, it really depends on how she were to run her campaign. I've heard so much shit that she's a blue dog Democrat to a generic Democrat to a, you know, a, a, a um, populist Democrat to a far left progressive this, nobody knows what this woman is. Nobody, it seems like. Like, everyone else got their opinion of her, which could be good news for a potential Senate run if Sherrod Brown were to retire, which it doesn't seem like he is because he's running. 
Okay, the number two choice for the Republicans is probably someone you're not expecting. It's honestly someone I hope runs personally. It's obviously my number two choice to run, and that is Daryl Scott. And he's a former past, or I think he's still a pastor. However, he was one of the first like minorities to endorse Donald Trump's campaign. Honestly, one of the first people to endorse Trump when he ran. You know, when Trump was a lot more moderate when it comes to his social policies. Uh, you know, when he's more open about his moderate social policies. Daryl Scott, of course, endorsed him, was one of the first people to do so, and has honestly not seen, like, much of the limelight. I think his biggest scandal, and he's, like, it's not even much. It's, like, it's a gaffe, and he misspoke, which I doubt will bother him much in a pri in a general election, is when he said that Chicago's gangs would lower the uh, crime population. Which doesn't make sense at all, and if you go back and listen to his uh, interview, you can tell that guy was tired as hell. Looks like he hadn't slept in days. So, you know, that is, you know, that's there, but, you know, it's a 50-50 with politics nowadays, whether that would hurt him or not. It's Ohio. Chicago's a long ways away. Really won't affect Ohio much. Unless there's a, unless crime skyrockets in Ohio from now t until 2024. But, you know, Daryl Scott, you know, is definitely the outsider choice if you want someone. I think his name should be thrown out there a lot more. Um, you know, just this is my, you know, wild card pick for to run for Senate. But next up, the number two Democrat, it might shock you, Sherrod Brown. Wait, let me explain. The guy is currently the incumbent center from Ohio, and really like he won by eight points or seven points, excuse me, he won by seven points in twenty eighteen when the national environment shifted six points to the right, so he outperformed by, like, eight or nine points nationwide, which, and ever since then, his approval rating has been stagnant. Some t so, he's definitely the one of the strongest people, and I understand why uh, Chuck Schumer and the Democrats are eyeing him to still run, because the strongest Democrat will not leave her position currently. But yes, yeah, Sherrod Brown, definitely. I think it's Sherrod Brown, another Ohio Democrat who used to be pro-life, turned pro-choice. I think if he were to, you know, moderate himself on his uh, abortion stances, try to appeal to Republicans, he could absolutely win. As well as influence his uh, populist ideals. Maybe uh, try to step on more Democrats' toes, which I don't see him doing. Because try to, you know, become like, take notes from Susan Collins up in Maine. Because, you know, be bipartisan, step on some toes in Senate, which he hasn't been doing much, unless I'm missing something. But, because it seems like to me the guy just votes with the Democrats 90% of the time, along with John Tester. So, well, John Tester, I can at least give some credit, like 80% of the time with John Tester. But <laughs> now my number one Republican, I did this in 2022, he was number one back then, and that's Jim Jordan, absolutely someone who really should, like, go to the Senate. I He probably won't because he just became the Judiciary Chair in the House. I A lot of people want him to run for Senate. I really doubt he will, but he's still, honestly, the strongest Republican to run. Honestly, probably won't perform the best, but it's still someone who would perform, you know... He won't perform the best. I still think Mike Turner and Daryl Scott would outperform better. But in terms of policy... He honestly appeals to those Obama-Trump voters better than anyone else. Those Obama white working class voters were kind of moderate blue dog Democrats. However, their economic policies was always number one for them, and Jim Jordan comes comes through for them in spades. Uh, when it comes to social policies, um, I don't think he'd have any trouble. Jim Jordan's not a very controversial individual. He hasn't said much. You know, I think his biggest controversy is that he voted against the certification of 2020, which that really does work for you Democrats. That really did it. Yeah, just making the election all about 2020. Mm -hmm. That really did do numbers for you. That's why Ron Johnson is still... That's why Ron Johnson got beaten in 2022. Oh, never mind. He got reelected. Okay, now the number one Democrat, you're probably wondering who the hell it is because Sherrod Brown is number two. Marcy Kaptur is the strongest Democrat to run in 2022. That's just my honest opinion. She is someone, another, like, that's the third fucking Democrat in Ohio that's changed from being pro-life to pro-choice. Third fucking Democrat. Jesus Christ. 
But honestly, she won by 13 points in a Trump plus two district. Even if J.R. Majewski had his military scandals, that shouldn't have done shit. Really, that's just my honest opinion. It really shouldn't have done anything except hurt him in Democrat counties. That is it. You know, like, it's still, like, it should have, like, she outperformed by 14 points. Wait, 16 points? That's a big outperformance. Um, and there's honestly someone, honestly, unless Republicans fuck up their nomination against Sherrod Brown, Marcy Kaptur would beat any Republican except maybe Mike DeWine. But she would beat any Republican, if she were to be the Democrat nominee for Senate, she would beat any Republican hands down. Though it'd be like a lean margin or, or tilt, if not likely, if they were run a bad candidate. Her populist policies are very, you know, in line with many Obama-Trump white working class voters. If she could moderate herself and maybe vote less than 100% with Joe Biden, even though it probably she does, like, that's probably what could hurt her in a general is the fact that she votes with Biden 100% of the time. If she were to moderate herself, that could help her, which it seems like she is because she did contemplate voting for McCarthy for Speaker. That is true, by the way. Look it up. You can't hate this woman. And she's a very good campaigner, which is something the Democrats would desperately need right now. But these are my 10 candidates who I think would be the best to run for Senate in Ohio. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is the Catech One saying, peace.